Hey now, I loved cured beef and I've had great luck with my brizola in the past and it feels a little risky to deviate from that. However, today I'm going to take this eye of round roast and I'm going to try to capture sort of like a Montreal steak spice um, kind of flavoring in it as opposed to uh, what I have going on with my brizola. So let's see how this goes. So I have this all padded off, nice and dried and cleaned up here. Now I do want to go ahead and remove, there is some silver skin hanging out on this meat here. Ooh, actually there's a whole weird vein. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna clean off um, any sort of uh, connective tissue that I'm not looking to keep on here. Cause really that's, that's something that's not going to break down by any means um, by uh, simply curing and dry aging. Um, and even though this is going to be sliced very thinly um, in the finished product, and you probably wouldn't really notice it. Um, just the more of it that I can get rid of initially is probably a smart play. So clean up time here. So after all said and done, I've got this uh, nicely cleaned up here. I've got this pile here of trimmings. I did take off some of the fat that was here, some of the, the outer fat. I mean, it was pretty thick and um, just wasn't the nicest looking fat. Not like, oh, I want to eat that fat kind of fat. Um, I do like having some for sure on here though, because this is uh, otherwise a very lean cut of meat. So now I just need to go ahead and get this weighed out so that I can calculate and weigh out all of my, uh, all of my spices and cure and salt and all that fun stuff. All right, so I have everything ready to go here for my cure. So in this bowl, I've already got 2.5% salt. So that's 2.5% of that just over three kilograms that I have here. So you just multiply by 2.5% gave me 75.5 uh, grams. So that's kosher salt. I also have 0.24% of cure number two. And then I've got 1% of black peppercorns that I just ran in my uh, little pepper grinder. I've got 0.75% each of um, paprika and garlic powder. Toss that in. I've got 0.33% uh, of onion powder. I have 0.33% uh, of ground coriander, 0.1% of um, some nice dried dill, and then I have 0.1% of some crushed red chili flakes. And I'm just going to go ahead and stir these all up with a fork here. Some of my onion powder <laughs> was in hard little balls. Um, so I'm just gonna mix this up and um, crush those. And there we have it, a delightful smelling little uh, cure spice blend. So now it's time to get that onto the meat. Got my meat in this meat tub here, which I like to use when I'm sprinkling on cure to large pieces of meat because it enables me to splash it on like so without risking having splash off um, all over my counter and whatnot. Kind of contains everything really nicely. There we are. Okay, and I still have a decent amount of the cure in there, which is all going to all go into the bag in uh, just a second here. All right, so this is going to be going into a long vacuum bag that we made up here. And now I want to make sure to get in as much of this as possible since it was all weighed out. Put that in like so. Now, the only issue with doing it like this is you don't want to wind up with a really big glob of cure sitting somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and pour the rest of this into this bag, uh, taking care to kind of distribute it around a little bit so it's a little bit more even. And the last step, last step on this day here is just to go ahead and vacuum seal. And the last step here is just to go ahead and get this sealed up. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm hitting the seal button on there before it gets a really hard vacuum on this because I do want a little bit of wiggle room going around in here um, just so that the cure can make contact with everything at all times. And I am going to just wait for this to cool down for a sec and then give it a second seal here just um, to help prevent any possible uh, leak situations. And now that that's all sealed up, I went ahead and I wrote what this is and um, actually the original weight of it here too, just, 
just so I can remember. And then um, I do have the date on this as well. I'm going to give this probably about four weeks in the fridge, um, curing, doing its thing. It's definitely more time than this needs to actually have that cure penetrate, but I also, and, and do its job, but I do want to give enough time that all these spices can really work their magic with this meat and really become strongly infused throughout. So four weeks is uh, certainly not going to hurt this meat. And if anything, it should really just give it a leg up on being really flavorful. We've had five weeks hanging out in here, getting massages, getting flipped around, absorbing all of that flavor. This is more time than this meat needed to actually get cured, but hopefully it was just enough time to get flavor country involved. Now, I'm just gonna go ahead, and slice it open, and pop it into this meat tub, because we need to go ahead and rinse this meat. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that. Oh, interesting, the sniff test. Mm. Delightful. Okay, I'm gonna just rinse this with some cold water uh, and we'll be right back. Here we are, all rinsed off. Took on some nice kind of ready orange color. It's fantastic. And now we wanna coat it in something. So we're going with a little smoked maple bourbon. So this is definitely sweet, it's a little smoky. It's got a little bit of that sort of bourbony kick. I think it, uh, we think it might pair out nicely. Woo, let's not drop it. There we go. Believe it or not, I have not been dipping into the bourbon. All right, there we go. Oh, so much maple. So much maple. Okay. I think I have rubbed my meat well enough. And now we are ready to get it onto this collagen casing, which was sprayed down with some potassium sorbate, and that's just to kind of help regulate some of the potential um, mold issues that can that can always happen with this type of thing and we are ready to go ahead and wrap right up here I'm trying to smoosh out as much of the air as possible we will be pricking it here in a moment but always nice to be as <laughs> prepared as I'm such a child <laughs> <laughs> as prepared as possible <laughs> All right, just before we go ahead and throw the netting on this, I'm going to use some half inch hog rings with my pliers here, just to help prevent this from sliding around too much or wanting to, to pull down as we are wrapping it up. All right, now this netting has been soaking in vinegar. Again, all of considering the uh, potential mold situations. It's nice to start from scratch. I'm just gonna roll that up, slide it on in. All right, we're now ready to, again, go with the hog rings here on the netting, just to hold it in place, especially um, on the bottom end where it's going to be uh, all that weight's going to be while it hangs in the curing chamber. Beautiful. And time to prick. I think we're looking good. Awesome. All right. Time to get to the chamber. Yeah. Little uh, sorbate spritz. Spritzy. And that's just, again, to help... Uh, prevent unwanted mold growth. And I've got a little stainless S hook. Um, you'll see on here that we also went ahead and uh, not only labeled and dated this, but we have uh, the original weight and the target weight after a 35% weight loss. And this is all in grams here. Because Canada. And the rest of the world. And the rest of the world. <laughs> and I'm just gonna go ahead Hang that in the chamber, like so. I can't, don't have room for it up on the top. Uh, it's a little too, uh, a little too tight there. I've got the curing chamber set. Uh, it's right around 70% relative humidity. Fluctuates just a little bit um, as it goes up and down. And then um, set at 52 Fahrenheit here as well. And it gets about as high as 55 and down to about 51 or 50 at the lowest point. So it's gonna let these uh, dry age in here until we hit our target. So two and a half months after getting into the curing chamber, I had a 35% weight loss on this 
Montreal steak spice beef, at which point I pulled it out, removed the netting, got it into this vacuum bag here, vacuum sealed it, and I let it sit in the fridge for a couple of months here just to fully equalize. Let's break into it. All right, let us slice into this. I'm gonna remove the casing here. Smells delicious. You wanna smell my meat? Oh, always. All right. Always, always shoving <laughs> your meat in my face. Yeah, exactly. Let's cut this in half here. Let's see what she looks like on the inside. Ooh. Hey, look at that. Beautiful equalization. Ooh. Let's slice it up. Ooh. Look at that. Ooh. Let's just rip off a bunch of this. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> look at that. Look at that. Mmm. I've been eating this for a bit. We've been eating this for a bit, and we're no. not stopping. It, no, it's not going to stop. This is super delicious. Get that nice little bit of fat cap on there. Just melts in your mouth. I'm a huge fan of our brazola recipe. The storm is amazing. This is something completely different, though. You get the paprika, onion powder, garlic powder going on there. Kind of this nice little melded, rich flavor. Then you get that little spiciness out of the black pepper. Not noticing a whole lot by way of the, the dill or the chili flakes, but that's totally fine because, mm, this is freaking delicious. So yeah, highly recommend it. Montreal steak spice, cured beef, delight. I don't know what else to call it. So yeah, super 11. Ow.